Hi, hi everyone. Welcome back to our podcast, Books and Beyond with Bound, where we speak to some of the finest writers in India and find out what makes them tick. And we're very excited to be back with our own very special episode, which is a video interview. I'm yeah, sorry. and I'm really, really excited about today, Tara, because you know, right? I love migration stories, and we have been talking about migration stories for a very long time, right? And and there are so many, you know, these famous books out there, like the namesake by Jum Palahiri, America. Your favorite? Yeah, by by Chimma Manda Adichie. My favorite. And, you know, and and Year of the Runaways by Sanjeev Sahota. So so what we have noticed is, you know, there's this one pattern throughout. right of struggle and for longing for this identity so it's always about moving to another place for a better life and how difficult it is to make there but what we're going to do today is we are going to analyze can these stories be different right yeah so we're going to analyze you know can these migration tropes that we see again and again be very different you know what does migration even mean to us you know what is an immigrant um is there a typical migration story what kind of stories we want to see in the future um and we think this is really relevant because obviously it's personal to us but there's such a huge demand for these stories right now especially with the pandemic you know people have been stuck in all kind of different places we've had so many issues uh you know with the migrant workers who uh, uday and mukherjee in his book essential items talks about but i'm getting ahead of myself um so before that we have a small little announcement so as you guys know we at bound curate the best community of content creators writers podcast producers and more our community is vetted they're professional and so if you are hiring content people for your business and brand you can come to us to find those professionals we post job opportunities every week so if you want to hire someone for your brand you can get featured on these job opportunity posts so check it out and dm us at bound india okay so let's dive into the episode <laughs> yeah so the first section is that you know we are going to just be discussing uh how we came across my uh, immigrant fiction you know yeah. what does the word migrant even mean yeah yeah so what is like what is your first experience with this kind of fiction or with this kind of like with these kind of themes or what is the word migrant mean to you and i know you have a very sort of unique relationship with that yeah uh, you know tara like actually you know since you mentioned that uh, jumpa lahiri is my favorite author you know so when i read her book for the first time uh, way back in school that was the time i realized that there is something called a migrant story you know i didn't even know that that's a thing and that was the first time i realized oh that maybe my parents must have faced a similar struggle you know when they moved uh, to the gulf but there were no stories about the gulf so it was you know about a hindu couple moving uh, moving to america but then i feel that you know as as i grew as i you know read more uh, stories and recently you know we also spoke to tony joseph when we read early indians you know it has opened up my mind to what migration might mean right it's it's not a it's not a i would say um, a thing in the past it's not something that very few people do i think we all very naturally as humans are migrants but if i can share something about my own personal history tara i think you know uh, there is a speculation that we mangalorians uh, migrated from goa so when the portuguese came uh, we wanted to preserve whatever we had like so it's assumed that you know we are converts so i'm a catholic right so you know we left to to preserve it and then you know of course i don't know much about the history but i've been thinking a lot about how i would say culture changes religion and and you know your basically your whole identity changes because of migration so for me um there are you know i've been thinking about it on two levels one level is you know migrating uh, because of a certain colonial past and the next is migration for work so that's where i relate to it the most but what about you tara I find that very interesting uh, Michelle and you know I liked what you said about that we are all migrants you know because like since yeah. our evolution when our first ancestor came out of Africa to you know everyone's families I mean we are always as human beings in a constant state of flux you know we are going for college we are traveling for work we are traveling for fun exactly. we are traveling for relationships we are uh, traveling because of like political changes now there's like you know there's there's a it's not only like one story of migration as human beings uh there is a migration story in all of our families so for me exactly. you know obviously like the partition 
uh, plays a big role in that, you know, because my father's family had migrated from um, from Karachi. And that's why I love that episode when we spoke about, uh, you know, migration stories and refugee stories with Archal. Yeah. Um, and they migrated from Karachi and they left behind, you know, they had a business, they left behind their houses. And it does, you know, like personally for me, I was a migrant when I went to study abroad, right? Uh, I migrated Good. for that. Yeah. I was a mi- migrant when I moved to Delhi, you know. So Correct. what is really like a, a migrant, you know, it's something. And is there even migration? Because like when I went to all these places, I made them my home. So was I then a migrant anymore? Like, what is the definition of that? Um so yeah, uh, Tara, you know, but apart from our own personal histories, I just wanted to mention this because I've, I have just recently read this uh, about, you know, why do probably, um, um, so this is another trope uh, that we have noticed that people move to the West for a better life. So I found a very different angle when I was re- researching on this, that people from the West move to other places because of the cold. I And I actually, you know, didn't, didn't think about it before. I only thought of birds, you know, migratory birds, they go, they hibernate, uh, you know. We have always heard about animals, but it's also said that a lot of people move, for example, from Canada or from colder countries to other warmer places because most of the time they face a very harsh cold weather. So that's something that I just recently read. Goa is a perfect place for that. Yeah. So actually, you know, uh, when I was, because I, as I told you, I'm, you know, quite interested in this and I write a lot of stories um, about mm-hmm. migration. So actually, migrant is a person who always returns back to their home country. Okay. And then immigrant which you usually hear in the context of the west right so an immigrant is somebody who goes and stays there so so oh, that's what oh. happens in the west right you go you get citizenship you stay there people don't really return okay so but, a migrant a migrant yeah. is like a person who's like moving but their home so what i said about like when you move yeah. to a place and that place becomes your home that is that is sort of that that is a changing idea of home but a migrant has one idea of a home Yes. And and that's how I relate because people who go to the Gulf, you have to come back home. You can't stay there. They don't give you citizenship. So we are migrants. We are temporary <laughs> people in those places, you know. Yeah. Right. But this whole concept, you know, I feel like whether you're a migrant or whether you're an immigrant, I, I think it should be much more fluid than it is now. Yeah. Because yeah. as I said, you know, like as humans, we are like and these na- <laughs> boundaries between nations and all these things, we're all made up you know uh and also like the word immigrant it has so many connotations right like if you think about it like i always have issue with the fact that like if i go and live in america i'm an immigrant but if like someone like from there comes and lives here they are an expat yes so what is the difference between these words and anyway that's a whole different topic but i want to go back to the stories aspect so you know we've discussed like what is migration and there's so much to discuss in this uh but like why are like these fiction you've come across all these like stories and stuff so like why are these stories like so interesting to you what are like what are the things that like attract you to apart from Mm. your own personal history which you already said so for me i think uh, because of the way i am as a person like i'm usually very realistic like i know people who read usually they romanticize and they you know imagine things but i think because of my upbringing and like i'm very grounded so i think i like stories which portray reality as it is, but it's also very interesting. I think in today's conversation, we'll discuss what is that reality, right? Why do people even move? You know, so that that's something that's been fascinating me for a long time. But you know, Tara, there was a recent news which I read um, in the newspaper, an unfortunate incident where, uh, you know, Gujarati family moved, uh, you know, they wanted to illegally migrate uh, to the US from Canada and they were found, uh, their bodies were found frozen on the border. And that really, really shook me. Uh, you know, and, and when I read follow up articles on that, it was said that, you know, there's a fantasy that people build that that apparently in the small village in Gujarat, they have a fantasy that every person from the family should migrate to the US. It doesn't matter how, doesn't matter what. I mean, it's not a necessity, really, but it's a fantasy. So that's something that's really made me rethink, you know, the kind of stories we have been seeing, whether whether, you know, that is reality. Is it just a fantasy in people's head or what is it? Yeah, speaking about these like fan, like you know, places of like fantasy mm. that you go to and then you like achieve your dreams. Is it Bombay also like that? You know, like it's a big exactly. city. We have all of these like yeah. celebs, this whole Bollywood dream. 
um and then there's two narratives right that these fantastical places build there's the narrative of you come into this place as an outsider Correct. whether you're a um uh sundar pichai or you're a uh, ayushman khurana you know <laughs> and you suddenly become this huge thing and this is this huge story of success right so that's one narrative and then the other narrative about these like places where your dreams come true is a struggler narrative Correct. which we also see where you're failing and you're struggling and in all of those so it's very interesting how even a place has so much sort of like yeah, yeah. meaning in the fact Met- metropolitan cities and these places where opportunities arise i think yeah true so what we're going to do is now in the next section of this episode we are going to be you know discussing and dissecting those patterns that we have noticed right there are certain patterns there are certain tropes like in any genre in literature so we are going to figure whether that's something i think in contemporary literature today you know are these tropes problematic is there something that these writers could maybe do differently so maybe we can start with discussing you know this whole idea of opportunity you know like the person yeah. moving for opportunity um and how a lot of books cover that Correct. So, so if I, you know, think about the word opportunity, Tara, it always reminds me of work. Uh, you know, because it's 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 an opportunity to discover uh, yourself, right? Not only the capacity with which you can earn, but also I think it it has a very broader value uh, to your life. And and one book comes to mind, uh, you know, Tara. So as you mentioned, you were a migrant when you went abroad to study. I have also I was in Bangalore for five years uh, when I studied. So I felt, you know, this this. Um, place where so many cultures um came together and and one thing that i loved about uh, the literature or stories about migration that is really thriving in bangalore are stories from the northeast okay so there's this book by anjum hasan which is called neti neti so it's this girl uh, sophie she moves uh, you know from shillong she goes to bangalore and she has a very uh, you know dull day job so her job is literally to add subtitles to to a uh, movie so so i think you know what that what anjum hasan was also trying to do is to show that we might have a dream right she wanted to achieve something in bangalore because everyone talks about opportunities in bangalore but the reality the lived reality was something entirely different she got bored of it she found that you know she she preferred the you know slowness calmness of shillong she missed that because she didn't like the way people were just after money just after opportunities in bangalore so that's one book i think that has always stayed with me that's What quite a different like narrative mm-hmm. and also i have to say that like watching movies and putting subtitles seems like a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i think i think you know after a point it becomes very repetitive and she wanted to do yeah, something yeah. more creative yeah. yeah like this is like very interesting because it's india focused yeah but it's for me like yeah like you know like my first uh, my first foray into this whole topic of migration was jhumpa lehri as well and and they talk about like indians immigrating to the us correct and since then i've read a lot of other books you know min minjin lee's uh, free food for millionaires yeah. which is about a korean family and it's about immigrating to the us and i've read you know uh, some more books about uh, you know um, it's called uh, a woman is no man about right. a palestinian family like who moves to the us so moves to the us <laughs> <laughs> yeah this term you know or moves to london moves to the uk or moves right. to the us if i was to look at a bookshelf just full of migration literature 80% of those books would be about moves to the us absolutely and moves to the uk and i don't blame that narrative because even in our like lives at home right like i'm sure you have relatives who have moved abroad like yeah, you know yeah. uh, i have many relatives who live in america the uk friends who moved to the you know right, for work right. and opportunity so it is a prevalent thing in our in our narrative of the way we see the world but i also feel like there's not enough stories that um are about other kind of migration that are taking place also. yeah all over the world you know i want to see more stories about people moving to bombay i want to see more people stories about moving if you talk about work as not, which we are yes. talk about opportunity um you know what about a person moving from america to india what do they you know there are people who do that where are those stories i want so, to read more of those you, because you i'm read, honestly huh? huh no you read a very interesting book that you were telling me about the other day startup wife 
okay so there's one issue that there's a lot of stories about immigrants in the west right yeah but now if you even go into those stories of immigrants that are in the west there is only one narrative and that narrative is of extreme struggle hmm culture shock yeah of culture yeah. shock and if it's a, so if it's a brown person in america that book is going to be about the immigrant experience right now i want to see stories about brown people in america living life why right. if you're a brown person in america we have to focus on the immigration aspect mm-hmm. that's why i like startup wife a lot because she was indian so no sorry she was bangladeshi she was a yeah. child of she was a child of first generation immigrant she was american so that was only one part of the identity the book was actually about like um the culture in startups like you know relationships marriage Ooh, yeah. it was not about the fact that she was an immigrant it was not one the immigration part of angle mm. identity and that's what i really appreciated is when i look at you know a person who is by identity an immigrant or child of an immigrant why do their stories only have to be around that right this was story about work about her mm. work as an american in india right. and being bangladeshi was only one aspect and i find that representation is very low priyanka, because it's priyanka chopra is mainstream yeah you know she's in the matrix she's not coming <laughs> yeah. in stories about like a person who's yeah yeah she's everything i love yeah. i love that because you know when you're boxed in, into a certain category tara that is that is you know one fear that i also had because when i started writing stories about probably uh, you know uh, people uh, with with a very similar background okay they might not be about migration but then i thought okay people will always box me as a writer who just writes about uh, you know uh, characters who are manglorian who are mm-hmm. from the gulf you know because there is a i would say there is a danger for writers as well to get stereotype right so i think um, even if if writers think out of the box and say okay can we probably write something different to do with migration i think it will be even good for them <laughs> because yeah. you, so what once you get stereotyped you're gone yeah what kind Sorry. of innovation do you do and i know that you like write a lot about it because you know you've lived hmm. in the gulf you've come back here you yeah. are very like uh, you have much more insight than i would have so what kinds of like things and how do you experiment uh, and and what kind of books do you read that experiment Oh so now that you ask me actually I have not closely analyzed my own work but I'll say it's it's not a conscious decision where I'm like okay I will not write about um, you know immigration so I think uh, for me one way to differentiate is to write about different stages in a person's life so I've written come I uh, for example I've written a coming of age story of a character then I've written about a character probably navigating the workplace you get what i mean like i mean the person could be a migrant but at different stages so i find mm-hmm. that fascinating when when you know you're going into a completely different mindset so as an adult you will probably navigate relationships differently but as a you know as a teen you will navigate dif- uh, relationships differently so i think for me that is i would say a big distinction another distinction is i never um, i i get bored easily <laughs> so i like to experiment honestly if i if i can i would like to uh, you know i've written stories in in an animal's point of view i've written stories from like i mean male female and different because because i find that challenging like i find it interesting because i think if you follow just one pattern or one flow uh, you know it it is kind of um, i would say restrictive for you also you know yeah Mm, I like that. Like, I like that. Like, whole thing of like, yeah, we can look at this whole concept of like migration and different life stages. Because again, what we often see is the journey and the yeah. person who's just got in there, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, we don't see a person who's like, uh, yeah, you know, older person like Jumpa Lahiri. She does that very really well in her short stories, where you see a housewife, you see a young student, yes. you see like a older person. you know in the name sake uh, uh, you you see it like across like family um, so so i find that very interesting that you experiment like that have you read mohsin hamid's books because they yes. deal with migration and Im- immigrants so well yeah and and i think one another reason i like him you know i think i've already mentioned this i've mentioned it several times i think because i like his use of second person narration he uses it very well uh but apart from that you know i wanted to talk about exit west uh, tara so that 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 book of his i think changed the way people saw migration because it you know it, it's it's fantasy it's kind of magical realism okay it's where people migrate on a daily basis you open a door and you're in a different world yeah. it's kind of like it's kind of like you know migration is not this thing that few people do 
And I like that. I like how he, you know, it's kind of like Tony Joseph's, uh, uh, you know, outlook that we all are migrants. So he made migrants, uh, migration seem very natural. I like that yeah, book. I love his that. writing and his book, Reluctant Fundamentalist. It brings me yes. back to the point that you said that a migrant is someone whose sense of home is like sort of situated in one place. And you see in Reluctant Fundamentalist, you know, this uh, Pakistani young guy walks in Wall Street and then 9-11 happens and he comes back home, you know. Yes. Uh, and that idea of home is also such a so such a key aspect of migration, immigration Correct. literature because it's sort of like the thing that makes it migrant or immigrant is the dichotomy between home and not home. And right. What are you like, you know, like the whole concept of home and making a foreign place your home. Um, Correct. So, you know, um, Tara, that brings me, because we're talking about opportunities, work and all of that. I think it made me think about uh, books that cover protagonists who just go abroad to study. So there are yeah. there are certain migration stories which only revolve around students. And I, you know, I really like stories about students because, you know, like you, I've also been a student, like away from home. So, you know, you, you I think, discover your identity when you're away uh, from your comfort zone, away from, you know, Very family. True. Before and, that, I had a yeah. question for you. Is yeah. traveling a migration? No. Because that you do that for leisure. And migration is not necessarily for leisure, but it's sort of as an escape or towards an opportunity or if you if you ask me, I would call travel stories migration stories, you know. Um so for example, they are migrants in a way. Now that depends upon how long they stay in a place. Correct? So there are people who revisit a place again and again. And one uh book that comes to mind is Taran Khan's Shadow City, right? So she's she wasn't somebody who just visited it for leisure maybe once or twice. So she was returning and every time she returned returning to, to place, Kabul. Exactly. Yeah. And and every time she returned there, she had a new insight. She found something different. So I, I do think travel stories can be stories of migration. Another um, very interesting episode we did was with Clyde uh, D'Souza. So again, you know, though he's a Goan, you know, he he's he's in Bombay, but then he, he returned back to Goa just to, you know, for example, research about the book, get understand his roots better. So yeah, I do think travel literature is, is uh, concerns migrants in a way. Okay, yeah, that's a very interesting perspective, which I don't have an answer to. But yeah, you were asking me about uh, books about study, right? About students. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so one of the, you know, like I like, I'm always interested in reading books that are like not about me. So, so because okay, I that's in interesting. The, the so, US. so you don't like to relate to the character you mean? I do relate, different... but I find okay. I'm more drawn to like, uh, actually, I don't stereotype. If it's interesting, I read it. Mm. Uh, but it is interesting that, you know, like I remember the first time I even thought of myself as a migrant was when I had gone to the U. You know, I wouldn't think of myself as a migrant, if, relating it back to travel and, and education, if I went to Delhi for two years. Right. I wouldn't label. I think that label also has a very strong connotation. Correct. So I went to Delhi for two years. Like I wouldn't label myself as a migrant. You know, you didn't uh, feel uh, I didn't like feel, a migrant. I wasn't being a mean right. away. So I don't know if like that would be categorized as that. But when I went to the US, we took a sociology class and we were asked to write about like our identity. Oh, and I remember nice. uh, writing about being Indian. And that was the first time. I had thought that I was an Indian because I have always grown up in India. I didn't wasn't surrounded by anyone who's not an Indian, you know. Right. I didn't know that like I have to define myself as this thing that is now Indian that oh yeah in India we dal or yeah in India we do this, you know, like <laughs> yeah. I never like it's thought just a way of, of myself living. as yeah, like yeah. And that's it was really interesting because like when you're placed in like a different which is like so far away from home. I think right. that would be a good definition that like if it also really is a travel, like if it's like that far away from home, correct, then correct. you're a migrant, you know, like so like mm. maybe if I traveled for a holiday to like Australia and stayed there for three weeks, <laughs> yeah. maybe then I'd be a migrant. Maybe if I traveled right. to uh, so, so I find Delhi, it I would not be a migrant. You're saying distance also matters. I'm you're saying, saying home. That like, further you are. Mm. Like what, what do you think of home? Like, you know, right. like if I, what, like if I think that India is my home, you know. Then I mm. feel mm. like I'm not a migrant. If you feel, feel at home, home anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. if I think like, oh, Delhi is not a home, and I feel like um, I think migration is a feeling. That, That's interesting. That yeah, is yeah. that 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 is a feeling that is made clear to you 
by thinking about this place is not my home and this place is my home so mm. like i think it's not a i really I think, like that i think it's I a like, feeling yeah yeah i like it because you know no passport can define what is home for you no papers can do that for you but it's a feeling yeah i like that i've not thought about that before because because i think a lot of times people take decisions for us right like we are told which is your home country we are told which is your you know like like i think there are different categories which also restricts the way we feel about them but like you said i think feeling is a very liberating uh, liberating thing so you know bringing back to our topic about studying abroad uh, tara so the recent book that you know we read was arzu by riva razdan and and i really liked it because and also earlier in you know in our i think in the second season we spoke to anmol malik who wrote uh, three impossible wishes right so both brilliantly written books um, you know with female protagonists who go abroad to find themselves i really liked that you know through study so so using study as a very important component right getting a degree and really making uh, something out of yourself i think for me those books really stand out what about you tara um my one of my favorite books of all time is americana by chimamanda adichie oh my god yeah. what a book you know like it's about like again this whole idea of home that we've been harping on about this nigerian woman goes to the us to study um and then she comes back right. and then she's reminiscing about like how it's also about identity because hmm you know like you spend 25 years in one place then you go to the us you spend another 25 years and then you come back home <laughs> but you spent 25 yeah. years in another place that has shaped you that has changed you yeah you know in a very different way than you would have changed if you were still living back home so when you come back after that amount of time your friends right. are different the way people think are different you don't belong here or there and and that's what she captured super well mm, a lot of us feel that you know like if you go and study abroad you spend 7 8 years then you come back there is that period of transition as well because you as human beings yes. we get a custom so that i think that she described that super well mm. and it brings me to another point so i recently went for a yoga retreat oh. um and um uh, the the person who uh, runs it was it's on, it was on a farm Oh okay. so the person who runs this farm has lived in, was an indian who then lived in the us for 15 years she okay. came back from the us to work and she was working in like public policy and she's a farmer so she lives the life of a farmer now okay you know? wow so like it's sort of like that dichotomy of like how things shape you mm. and then like the yeah, transition like, like, period of like yeah like you back. borrow some things you know it's it's so interesting because you are you're shaped by by all these you know very interesting experiences you know so you know this reminds me of yeah, something i recently uh, heard you know so there are these a uh, group of people okay who are american citizens right and they've got the citizenship very long back uh, so what they do is you know they keep frequently uh, returning to india because it's what they say is you know there's never uh, i would say this feeling of home is never the same in the us so even though they are citizens there they always come here every 2 to 3 months you know just get the feel of life sit on the road have tea talk to people like you know like you said um your instructor lives the life of a of a farmer i think you know that that really coming down to your roots and seeing what what living in india is like is very interesting i love india yeah mm. um right so so since you brought up travel literature tara i wanted to you know speak about um books probably written by foreigners who come to india right so uh, you know and and that's an interesting thing because i think you had uh, you know in our discussions you had earlier told me that you would like to see a story written by a white person who's who comes to india but not just as a visit like you said like somebody who settles here and and lives a life like we do right so are there any are there any interesting books you have come across or or what stories you would like to see i would say about uh, travel to india Yeah that's very interesting uh, like i haven't like i think one example is william dalrymple mm. uh because he really like is an indian now you know he's like sort of like assimilated he writes about like in in history he sort of just like is an indian <laughs> um and that's a good yes. example and okay. i also want to talk about like what happens when sort of like i read this book nine lives of pakistan right mm. now it's written by a, a, a white journalist declan walsh um so i kept thinking about it because i'm like you know like 
a lot of like the reporting that is done on like sort of like underdeveloped countries is written by the west by by western perspective now i don't see anything like too wrong in that either like it was very nuanced it was very objective gone are the times when like you know like you would have orientalizing narratives but it also just made me think of like the messaging you know like mm. when someone from the west writes about a place that is sort of like in conflict or underdeveloping whether it's nuanced objective or not what does the messaging tell you like why aren't there stories yeah. of like people like you know like why is it only like one kind of person telling these kind of stories correct correct and that's <clears throat> i think that really makes me think about all the stories that we've heard about displacement right so so this mm. brings us to another i mean maybe not very um, you know happy as other other travel uh, writing as we discussed but but probably stories about you know refugees war partition you know like riska's really really unfortunate sad stories about um, migration and and that is something that i think um, is is not given light because tara honestly if you ask the uh, migrant or sorry if you ask the refugee or the person to write the story i think that will have value like you said it's always other people writing on their behalf you know so but then so, yeah but the catch 22 is that they don't have the resources where with all uh, want to write those no no correct i meant i yeah. meant a, a more yeah. you know larger yeah, thing yeah. that you know i mean i would really really love to hear stories from them you know of course a, a reportage and a journalism does that they do interview these people and they and they translate the stories but i also feel there are layers of hierarchy there there is a you know power um involved there um uh, so you know uh, tara there is this um story that i recently heard of course it's not a book but it's something that i recently heard about um a cambodian a uh, person who who actually migrated to the us because of the war so he was a war he was a refugee okay and he when he migrated there you won't believe he's called the donut king of the us he made an empire of donuts so it it was so fascinating to see you know and when he came to the us sara there was nothing he had to be ad- their family had to be adopted by a us um family because you know they were refugees it's 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 just sad to think about what happens to refugees right there's nothing you don't have any papers you don't have any identity so but how he started it from scratch and now it's a donut empire uh, in the us it yeah. reminds me of persepolis like mm. the persepolis 2 the graphic novels there are yes. some fantastic gra- graphic novels that like deal with this uh um, deal with this issue and it also reminds me of uh, uh udayan mukherjee's essential items because yes. it's it's fiction but the way that he is sort of like empathized with um you know the plight of these mi- the migrant workers in the pandemic you know and, and what happened to them um it's very sort of like nuanced and it's told with yeah. a lot of uh, love i would say so that was that was a book that i really really enjoyed as well hmm so you know tara we have covered stories uh, in books uh, so far actually it just it made me think about how many stories we have of migration on in in tv shows right so so movies tv shows i mean you know stories we we love stories in all formats so you know there is this um uh, series that i don't know if you've seen it i think it's a chinese american family who's uh, i mean a chinese family who who just who arrives in the us it's yeah, called yeah. fresh off the boat i've seen yeah, it, I, I, see it. Yeah. i really like that yeah. you know and and um, uh, but i also want to talk about it since we're talking about patterns since we're talking about tropes and can they be problematic you know atara it's always when they show asians in in the us they have to be smart they have they are, they are people who are cutthroat so so what i noticed was one thing i would i would have liked to see different um in in portrayal of 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 indians or asians there you know like like the indian character in uh, big bang theory the nerd it's always the you know the indian is is the nerd uh, in the group i i would love to see uh, uh, characters who are artists I, what i mean is i'm not saying it's it's easy it's definitely difficult right so and there's a lot of competition there but i would have liked to see stories about asians in the us who are probably artists writers you know like amitabh kumar for example you know there are a lot of indians uh, who have made it big um, in the us or in the west right so they are writers but we always get to see the ones in the sciences and 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 you know so in in fresh off the boat uh, you know the mother is so focused on getting the kids to study maths and science that she says no no music no arts no anything you know so i, I would like to see something different yeah like so many you? of our indian writers have made it so big like salman rushdie right midnight yeah. children 
uh, yeah. great book and like Amitava Kumar who, who teaches at Vassar who we are interviewing uh, later on you know so many interesting like sort of like creative professionals have also made it very very big in yeah, the but, but you don't see these tropes in, in, in the TV shows no? yeah, yeah yeah. I think we love mm. we love stereotyping I, I think like <laughs> you and I like love like sort of like talking about stereotypes yeah. and breaking them so I think we do that Correct. sort of like across like um, across uh, yeah, formats yeah and Correct. I think that's Correct. because we've also been like sort of stereotyped ourselves as is everyone mm. so yeah, yeah. you know it comes from that and Correct. I think as a creative person if you stereotype you limit your creativity right yes. like <laughs> the only way you can exactly. be creative is if you like think outside labels and outside exactly. the boundaries um, so uh, so Tara, you know, now that we've had like, you know, all this, you know, discussions about tropes, different, different kinds like work, study, refugee, partition, travel, all of this. What I'd like to, you know, uh, know from you is what difference would you like to see in stories about migration? You know, so, so out of everything that you've seen so far, be it TV, be it books, be it whatever, uh, what is something you've, you've not seen? And, and you'd really like to see I think there's you. two things. So one, I think there's many things. But the one that I think of most is like, if I think about like someone's identity is not only an immigrant. So the startup wife would be like a great, um, great example of that. Yeah. And I also love thinking about prehistory. Because prehistory is a time in which there was no nations, there were no passports, you know. Right. We were all migrants, you know, our sense of home was very different the way we thought about things. And, um, you know, so I love Tony Joseph's early Indians where he actually describes the different kinds of migrations that happened across the world into India that then made us who we are. That then so you combined, mean time period as well? Yeah, yeah. that then combined oh. together to sort of like produce our racial profile that we see today. You know, what kinds of mixtures, what kinds of things had had to happen for us to even, you know, be Indian, as he says. So I think that was a very interesting book for me. And it also brings us a lot closer to each other. Because if you think of it in terms of like, you know, like, like so I love Sapiens, because Sapiens right. is also a story about, I love these, like, yeah. I took a class in college also, and it was all about like early migration. So Ooh, for me, okay. like, I love that kind of stuff. And it also makes you feel a lot closer to like, everyone right wow. because like these borders yeah, yeah. and all of that that is recent but we were always sort of you know wow very moving. very nice i, I really like what about that you? thought yeah I, I really that that's a very warm feeling you know tara where there are no borders <laughs> it's yeah. just it's a, it's, a, it's a free world for everyone i really like that concept um you know where you don't need a visa probably to go to other places but so for me, I think one biggest thing is different geographies, as we, you know, uh, covered earlier, like the Gulf, for example, I would love to see more stories about the Gulf, because I don't know, like, why is it always about the West? <laughs> you know, like, there are lots of other places where people migrate to, uh, you know, so I would say, for example, Latin America, right? Like, why not? There are lots of Indians who travel to Latin America, but we don't hear about Af their stories. Like the Indians travel to Africa, there's so it's many... Yeah. Yes, exactly. And and actually, you know, many people don't know, but, you know, Goans, when the Portuguese took Goans to, to Africa, so there are many Goans who've lived there and, you know, who've had their life there. So there's a lot that we haven't heard, right? As you said, it's always probably just written by, by people who are from that community. It's not written um, as much. And another difference I would like to see is uh, uh, mm -hmm. characters who are from different industries. Like I said, maybe more creative industries, not very typical labor um, intensive, you know, so... Yeah, I think I think those are two ways. But but another thing that comes to mind, Tara, is how they're written. Correct? Like we discussed, is it realistic? Is it always realism? Or can you add fantasy and, and magic realism? So I think uh, somewhat like Mohsin Hamid, somewhat like, you know, Deepa Kunni Krishnan. So he wrote Temporary People about the Gulf. But very interesting because there's magic realism in that. So I do think how it is written also matters a lot. So the style of the writer. Yeah. Like that reminds me of like even Sanjeev Sauta's recent book. Uh, the yeah. China room. The chi China room, yes. You know, where you have like a like a person who's like migrated and then he's coming back to India and then he's telling Correct. the story of like the grandmother. So like mm. difference between past and present. So I like what you said about like experimenting with style and format. Yeah, yeah. And not only content because that Correct. can really add a lot of richness. Yeah, and his was like matriarchy, right? It's all about the women in the family. Very different angle. Yeah. yeah. Correct. 
yeah so I'd, I'd also really like to hear from our listeners about you know what kind of migration stories do they want to hear uh, are there any examples that you guys might have so you know love to increase our reading list so if you do please do reach out to us at bound india on all our social media platforms we'd love to hear from you about your thoughts on this episode Yes, and we hope you enjoyed it. I definitely did. <laughs> I I just love when we when we you know I, my favorites are our own episodes because I think we have this interesting brainstorming uh, session which is a lot of food for thought. So usually after our episodes, I also end up thinking about you know what we have discussed. So. I really enjoyed it. Uh but yes, don't forget uh you know we have we curate the best uh, vetted creative opportunities for all of you. We have a community of content creators, writers, podcasters and all of it. So if you're hiring creative content professionals for your business, your brand, you know you can come to us to hire um a creative professional, right? So we post opportunities every week. So if you want to, you know, feature your um Sorry, what is it? If you want to feature, if you want to hire, okay. So if you want to hire a creative professional, DM us at Bound India on all platforms. Yes. yes, and so we are ending this episode on an exciting announcement. Our next guest is the evergreen Sudha Murthy, who yes. has won so many accolades for writing, including the Padma Shri. Uh, and we're going to be covering how she is still a child at seventy-one, <laughs> um, children's books, and a lot more. Yeah and you know I just can't wait for the episode Tara because she is one of the most requested guests so far you know whenever we put up a call on social media and ask okay who should we interview her name always comes up so we totally guarantee you uh, you know nani dadi vibe next episode yeah. yes so thank you so much for tuning in to books and beyond with bound with us and we'll be back next Wednesday with Sudha Murthy we hope you enjoyed this episode see you soon bye bye